Okay, Ali, I moved you back to host and we're live on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you.
We are live on YouTube and UGTV. <clears throat> All right, before I call the meeting to order, I want to announce that due to COVID-19, uh, some commissioners, staff, and public are attending remotely via Zoom, by phone, or in person. All participants joining by phone should mute their phones when not speaking to avoid background noise. During the meeting, please make sure that you announce yourself by name and title every time you speak so the public that is observing knows who is speaking. This is critical given the number of remote participants and his current guidance from the Kansas Attorney General. Due to COVID-19 requirements, the public is allowed to participate by Zoom or submit comments by email prior to the meeting. Those comments are included in the record of the meeting. I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll. Good evening, roll call. Bynum? Here. Burroughs? Here. Townsend? Townsend? McKiernan? Here. Ramirez? Here. Johnson? Here. Kane? Markley? Here. Walters? Here. Bill Brook? Here. Alvey? Here. Our invocation is being given by Commissioner Harold Johnson of Faith Deliverance Church of God in Christ. Thank you, Mayor. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, what a privilege and honor it is to be able to come together as the mayor and commissioner tonight. We invoke your presence uh, in all that we say and do. Our hearts and minds are heavy this evening as we consider the lives of low, those who were senselessly taken in the city of San Jose, California. We pray for the families of those who are grieving, and whose hearts have been broken, that you would help them through this time of bereavement. As we consider the work tonight, Lord, we ask you, God, to lead us, uh, illuminate our hearts and minds uh, so that we may um, make decisions for the betterment of our community from every sector, from every person's. We pray this, God, in your blessed name. Thank God. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic with which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any revisions to tonight's agenda? Mayor, there were no revisions. Thank you. We have two parts to our meeting, planning and zoning first. Followed by regular commission. I ask the clerk to read the statement required by state law governing the planning and zoning portion of our meeting, followed by the items on the planning and zoning consent agenda. Good evening. We would like to welcome all present to this meeting of the Unified Government Commission. Members of the commission are Mayor David Alvey, Commissioner Melissa Bynum at large, District 1, Commissioner Tom Burroughs at large, District 2, Commissioner Gail Townsend, District 1. Commissioner Brian McKiernan, District 2. Commissioner Christian Ramirez, District 3. Commissioner Harold Johnson, Jr., District 4. Commissioner Mike Kane, District 5, who is un unable to attend tonight. Commissioner Angela Markley, District 6. Commissioner Jim Walters, District 7. And Commissioner Jane Philbrook, District 8. As each petition is called this evening, all persons for or against will be given the opportunity to express their views. If this is the first time that a particular petition has been before this commission, the commission has three options. Option one, it can approve the recommendation of the planning commission with six votes. Option two, it can override the planning commission's recommendation, but it would take eight votes to override. Option three, it can return the matter to the Planning Commission for further consideration, together with a statement specifying the reasons for the referral back to the Planning Commission. The consent agenda is the first part of the planning and zoning agenda. Items on the consent agenda have received a unanimous vote of recommendation by the Planning Commission. And unless there is a request to set aside an item from the consent agenda by the applicant, a member of the public, 
the Unified Government Commission or staff, then the Planning Commission's recommendation on all of the items on the consent agenda will be adopted by the Unified Government Commission at one time. I will read the list of agenda items on the consent agenda. And when I have completed the list, the mayor will ask if there are any requests to set aside items from the consent agenda. This is your time to raise your hand and request that an item be set aside if you do not agree with the Planning Commission's recommendation. If you contacted the UG clerk's office, that item will be set aside by the UG clerk on, on your behalf. If an item is set aside, the matter will be discussed and voted upon separately. All items not set aside will be approved with the Planning Commission's recommendation. We appreciate the attendance of those people here this evening, and we recognize the importance of each petition. We would remind you that there are a number of items on the agenda, and we would appreciate your efforts to make your remarks as concise as possible. We ask that anyone who is joining us by Zoom or by phone to mute your phone when not speaking to avoid background noise so you will not disturb the meeting. Once the petitioners make their presentation, anyone for or against will be allowed the maximum three minutes to state your views. This is your time to raise your hand. When your name is called, please state your name and city for the record. The mayor and commission are required to disclose contacts with pro proponents or opponents of any item on the planning and zoning agenda. I will ask if any member of the commission wish to disclose any contact with proponents or opponents of, on any agenda, on any item on the agenda. Mr. Mayor, we have several in the um, audience that has a, their hands up. Commissioner McKiernan. Thank you, Brian McKiernan, District 2. I have had contact with proponents and opponents of SP 2021-015. Commissioner Bynum. Thank you, Commissioner Bynum at large, District 1. I've had contact with supporters of non-consent item A1, change of zone. Commissioner Burroughs. Thank you. I've had uh, contact in support of SP 2021-30 and SP 2020-033. Commissioner Markley. I've had contact with supporters of the same one Commissioner Bynum said. I can't get my agenda up yet, but same item. <laughs> Commissioner Ramirez. I've had uh, received communication uh, and proponent of SP 2021 028. Commissioner, Commissioner Phil Brooks. Thank you. Um, I have had proponents of SP 2021 024. Thank you. I will now read the items on the consent agenda. Planning and zoning consent agenda, change of zone applications, item number one, COZ 2021-008, Olivia Diane Moore. Change of zone from R1 single family district to AG agricultural district for horses and chickens at 3860 Bell Crossing, recommended for approval. Item number two, COZ 2021-011, Caitlin Wolf with Bartlett and West. Change of zone from previously approved MP2 plan general industrial district to remove 45 foot landscape buffer at 6716 and 6720 Burger Avenue, recommended for approval. Item number three, COZ 2021 012, Ray L. Sawyer. Change of zone from R1 single family district to AG agricultural district for horses at 3726 North 47th Terrace, recommended for approval. Special use permit applications, item number one, SP 2021 015, Danielle Castillo with the Mockingbird Lounge, renewal of a special use permit for a drinking establishment and live entertainment at 204 Orchard Street, recommended for approval for five years. Item number two, SP 2021-024, Brody Shirar with North Point Development. Special use permit for the temporary use of land for the existing commercial truck driving training facility at 6801 State Avenue, recommended for approval for two years. Item number three, SP 2021-025, Jorge Salazar with JIAJ Inc. Renewal of a special use permit for live entertainment in conjunction with a restaurant at 151 South 18th. Recommended for approval for five years. Item number four, SP 2021-030, Reed and Marissa Roberts. Special use permit for the continuation of an event venue with live entertainment at 3150 North 91st Street. Recommended for approval for 10 years. Item number five, SP 2021-031, Richard and Mary Leslie. Special permit for the continuation of a kennel for four dogs 
at 334 North Thorpe Street, recommended for approval for five years. Item number six, SP 2021-032, Roberta Laird, renewal of a special use permit for a commercial specialty shop at 3704 North 99th Street, recommended for approval for two years. Item number seven, SP 2021-033, Steve Beaumont for Chateau Avalon, renewal of a special use permit for live entertainment at 701 Village West Parkway, recommended for approval for two years. Item number eight, SP 2021-036, James M. Baines, special use permit for 20 chickens at 9350 Nelson Lane, recommended for approval for two years. Item number nine, SU 20-0097, Cabron Mills, special use permit for a trans, uh, transitional group home at 933 Quindaro Boulevard, recommended for approval for one year. Item number 10, SP 2020-77, Felix Adolfo Cruz with Central America Auto Sales and Repair, special use permit for auto salvage, auto mechanic, used auto sales, and import-export business at 900 South 66 Terrace, recommended for approval for two years. Item number 11, SP 2020-101, Wathquick, Cassim with KCK Automotive. Renewal of a special use permit for a body shop at 744 Kansas Avenue, recommended for approval for two years. Miscellaneous ordinances, item number one. An ordinance rezoning property at 1111 North 98th Street from AG Agricultural District to RP5 Planned Apartment District, recommended for approval. Item number two. An ordinance rezoning property at approximately 9700 Leavenworth Road from CP1 Plan Limited Business and MP2 Plan General Industrial Districts to MP2 Plan General Industrial District, recommended for approval. Item number three, an ordinance rezoning property at 4223 and 4225 Gibbs Road from R1 Single Family District to AG Agricultural District, recommended for approval. Item number four. An ordinance vacating an electrical easement at 1879 Village West Parkway, recommended for approval. Item number five, an ordinance vacating an electrical easement at 1879 Village West Parkway, recommended for approval. Item number six, an ordinance vacating a sanitary sewer easement at 1879 Village West Parkway, recommended for approval. Item number seven, an ordinance vacating a utility easement at 1879 Village West Parkway, recommended for approval. Item number eight, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for a doggy daycare for 10 dogs at 7714 Roland Avenue, recommended for approval. Item number nine, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for a short-term rental Airbnb at 2716 North and 119th Street, recommended for approval. Item number 10, an ordinance rezoning property at 3410 and 3412 Metropolitan Avenue from R1B single family district to R2B two family district, recommended for approval. Item number 11, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for a storage container for storage of tools at 3319 North 59th Street, recommended for approval. Item number 12, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for an outdoor event space at 701 Village West Parkway. Item number 13, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for the temporary use of land for a parking lot at 4620 Mission Road, recommended for approval. Item number 14, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for a beer Hall and former foundry at 101 Central Avenue, recommended for approval. Item number 15, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for a used car dealership at 1010 Merriam Lane, recommended for approval. Item number 16, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for live entertainment in conjunction with existing bar at 6720 one half call drive, recommended for approval. Item number 17, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for a continuation and expansion of a, of a liquor store with packed liquor, with packaged liquor at 3801 Leavenworth Road, recommended for approval. Item number 18, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for a banquet facility in the evening and weekend at 1000 North 82nd Street, recommended for approval. Those are all of the items on the consent agenda. Thank you. One second. Thank you. Uh, does any member of the commission, the county administrator, or public wish to set aside any item on the planning and zoning consent agenda? If an item is not set aside, all items on the planning and zoning consent agenda will be voted on by one vote to follow the recommendation of the planning commission. Commissioner Townsend. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Gil Townsend, District 1. I'd like to set aside 
item number COZ2021-0121. Ray L. Sawyer and also SU20-00097 Cabrin Mills. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the conference room who would like to set aside an item? Not hearing there any, we have two attendees who would like to set aside items. Would the clerk please recognize them? Yes, we have Mr. Daniel Castillo. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. Go ahead, Mr. Castillo. What item would you like to have set aside? That would be my special use permit 2021-015. I would like to remove it uh, remove my case from the consent agenda tonight and remand it back to the planning commission to address some conditions of approval. Thank you. Next item. And now we have Ms. Lola Peck. Yes, Ms. Peck. Mrs. Peck, what item would you like to have removed from the consent agenda? Okay, I can you hear me now? I think I was muted. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm not asking at this point. I'm asking, did you, I, I think you might have said our number, COZ2021-010. Was that possibly the second? And I didn't get everything they said. I've never done this before, so I didn't hear what they if they approved it or did not approve it? Mayor, she's not on consent, if I'm understanding the name you read correctly. Yes, ma'am, yours is on non-consent, so yours item will be heard. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much, I'll go back. Thank you, all right. All right, if, since I see no others, are there any others that you can see? No other hands are raised. Thank you, all right. Did we receive any request from the public to set aside an item, Mr. Dykeman? No requests were received. All right. I'll entertain a motion for approval of the planning and zoning consent agenda. Move to approve all items remaining on consent. Commissioner Bynum. Commissioner Burrell, second. <laughs> motion and a second. Any discussion by the commission? Roll call, please. Roll call. Bynum. Aye. Burroughs? Aye. Townsend? Aye. McKiernan? Aye. Ramirez? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Markley? Aye. Walters? Aye. Philbrook? Aye. Start. Aye. Aye. Nine <laughs> to zero. That motion carries. Thank you. We now move to uh, the first set aside item change of zone 2021 012. Uh, Commissioner Townsend? Uh, I'll give you the lead here. Thank you, Mary. Commissioner Gil Townsend, District 1. Uh, this item was brought forward requesting a change of zone at 3726 North 47th Street uh, to an agricultural district from our run single family district so that the applicant could uh, board horses. I would like to uh, transfer this over to Mr. Gunner Hand. Mr. Hand um, has been, uh, has made me aware of some um, developments with regard to the status of code enforcement uh, on the property. And I was interested in uh, identifying what the status of any open code enforcements were, noting that in our packet, they're indicated there have been some history. So I would like to uh, turn it over to Mr. Gunner Hand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. This is Gunner Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, again, as the commissioner mentioned, this is a change of zone from R1 to AG. It's a property located in the Sorter Drive area, um, kind of in the North Midtown, uh, very close to the Northeast area master plan uh, location. 
Um, it's on 7.34 acres of land. Mr. Sawyer is looking to board horses and do that um, with freedom that is allotted to him with an agricultural zone versus an R1 district. The zoning code does allow for the keeping of horses if your property is over five acres. It does not allow you to have more than one accessory structure. And currently Mr. Sawyer has two on his property and is looking to do potentially more as well as other related agricultural practices, which is why he's seeking the, the change of zone. Um, I will note before I get into the issues related to um, code enforcement that the planning commission did add a condition of approval as it related to some of the comments from the conservation district on this issue, the conservation or on this property. Conservation District was concerned uh, about some of the, uh, what they saw was potentially some illegal fill material at the location and how that would work with um, essentially a horse farm. And um, that same concern led the commission to add a condition of approval that required the uh, Mr. Sawyer to maintain um, seeding on the property so that they could keep those horses. As you can see in the aerial here, it's not all open field, there is a heavily wooded area along the Sorter Drive, uh, as well as around the pond. Um, upon inspection uh, today, in fact, um, by staff, we did verify what we think are some code violations. Uh, about November of last year, we received a complaint um, about potentially some illegal dumping on the property. The code enforcement officer at the time drove by and did not see anything. I spoke to that code enforcement officer this week and what happened was I think they drove by Sorter Drive. And if you drive by on Sorter Drive, all you see is woods. North 47th Terrace looks a lot like a um, dirt driveway. It's not posted as a public street. Um, so you could have easily driven past it without going down it. I was able to go down North 47th Terrace and saw some of the issues that I think the conservation district. So we do have an open case still from that original November um, review. It was never closed. I think what we would like to do is um, two things. I had a conversation with Mr. Sawyer this week as well. Mr. Sawyer is concerned that we had a limit on four horses. Um, he'd like to increase that a little bit. It's something we would like to take back to um, planning commission to review that condition of approval. I think in principle, staff is not um, concerned about adding more horses, but we would want to review that with the conservation district. Again, their general rule of thumb is about one horse per acre, um, and that's one acre of generally field and grazing area and that is limited at this site. So we'd want to make sure we get the right number and increase that as much as possible for Mr. Sawyer, as well as sort of re, uh, take a second look at this code issue related to the property. And I can get to it right here. Here's some of the earlier pictures that we received from staff, um, excuse me, the applicant. Uh, upon further inspection this afternoon, you can kind of see, it looks like there's some illegal dumping happening on Mr. Sawyer's property. Um, sort of uh, in this bottom right-hand picture, you can see it looks like somebody just pulled up on North 47th Terrace and unloaded a load. But Mr. Sawyer did mention that he had, had been having some drainage issues from the higher elevation down into his pond. And so he was trying to um, stop that with some uh, rock, but that rock is asphalt, crushed concrete and other materials. So there's some issue with that that we would like to review. Um, independently. So our recommendation for this case would be to remand it back to the Planning Commission so that we could address those conditions of approval as well as buy us some time to look into that code issue a little bit more. And with that, I'll take any questions. Uh, this is Commissioner Philbrook. So you were talking about the number of horses per acreage. I believe, uh, Mr. Hand, that that's if all of that is grassland and well planted, not just acreage. That's correct. Okay, so no way would this. Would it'll be, be able less to... than, yeah, it'll be less than seven. He has 7.34 acres, so it'll be something less than seven horses. But I believe it could be more than four. Uh, yeah, all right. So, Gunner, my, I, I do have a concern, and unless these horses are fed every day, um, this pasture would no way, shape or form, be able to handle a horse per acre. And that's my statement on that, having horses and having property that looked a lot like that, okay? 
I'm just going to tell you, it takes at least two acres per horse with that kind of property. Thanks. Commissioner Townsend. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Townsend, uh, District 1. I wanted to thank Mr. Hand for following up on my primary concern about this, which were uh, any code enforcement items that may still be open. And he indeed find uh, more than what was in our packet of information this afternoon. Uh, now, upon hearing that the applicant wishes to add a number of horses beyond the four originally uh, requested, I am inclined to support Mr. Hand's recommendation to remand this back to the Planning and Zoning Commission. My only question is whether Mr. Hand has a particular amount of time uh, that he would recommend for the Planning and Zoning Commission to consider this uh, and how the code enforcement issues might be abated. Uh, this is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. I believe if we remand it back to um, the Planning Commission, it would be heard in June. And at that time, we could decide if we needed an extra 30, 60, or 90 days. Um, I believe that we can get our head around the code issue between now and mid-June, um, depending on how fast we can hear back from the Conservation District and get that additional number for his condition of approval. So it may very well take an extra 30 days into July um, but I think we should get it to the planning commission first and then see if we need more time. Maybe okay, more. so you, the recommendation would be send it back to the planning uh, and zoning commission for at least 30 days. Yep. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, with that, um, I, would, I would move that this item be remanded back to the planning and zoning commission for further attention for 30 days. Second, Commissioner Philbrook. Just to be clear, I, I do need to allow the applicant to present their application. Is that correct, Mrs. Brown? Yes, and you need to hold a public hearing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So that's the applicant to present his application. Please state your name and address for the record. Mr. Sawyer, are you present? I don't see that he is present. Okay. Is there anyone present who would like to speak in support of this petition? I see no hands raised. Did we receive any notice by mail? We did not. All right. Is there anyone like to speak in opposition to this petition? We do not see any. Did we receive any by mail? We did not. Thank you. I've now closed the public hearing. Uh, we have a motion to remand this to the Planning and Zoning Commission and a second. Any commission comments or questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. Roll call. Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. Aye. Townsend. Aye. McKernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Markley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. The vote is nine to zero. That motion carries. Thank you. The uh, next set aside item is uh, Commissioner Townsend, correct me if I'm wrong, SU-00097. That is correct, Cabrin Mills, uh, Mayor. Yes. Is that SP or? SU. Okay, SUP, all right. Commissioner item Mayor. number nine, Mr. Mayor, item number nine. Thank you. Commissioner Townsend, would you like to speak to the reason you pulled this? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Commission Townsend, District 1. I pulled this for, for more to get more information about specifics of um, how um, the tenants of this proposed home will be guided to that location, how many will be there, what is the source of the referral uh, of these um, potential residents, 
and what the plan is for who will be there, uh, other such undertakings by uh, the entity that will oversee that. So I would just like some more information uh, about the proposal itself that was not provided in our uh, booklet. Thank you. Mr. Hand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner. Uh, again, this is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, so what we have in front of us is a special use permit for a group home for seven young men. That's six youth as well as one staff um, at 933 Quindera Boulevard. This is in the Northeast area. Um, master plan area, uh, pretty much right across the street from Parkwood Park and Caddy Corner from the Parkwood uh, Historic District, um, as you can see right here. Uh, Mr. Cabrin um, is the owner of the property. His father and um, I apologize, uh, and another associate is seeking to open this group home with some community support. Uh, there was a bit of confusion. This case was uh, was continued from the April Planning Commission hearing because the Planning Commission requested some additional information as it relates to the operation of the group home. Uh, the applicant did not supply that information until after the deadline where we submitted our revised staff reports. So the staff report that you see was the April staff report, didn't get clarified until at the, meet, the May planning commission meeting. So originally they were, we thought that they were requesting 12, they confirmed they're actually only requesting seven people in, at a time uh, living at this location. Um, so that is a corrected condition in the minutes of the planning commission hearing that you see before you. That's why there's uh, some inconsistencies between the staff report and, and what ended up happening at the planning commission. Um, the, just as a side note, um, this house still does need a building permit to finish some of its, re, uh, to finish some of its re remodeling. You can see in these pictures, it's kind of in the middle of remodel when Mr. Cabrin Mills bought the property. Um, because it is within the environs of the historic district, it will need an environs review for the, for, to complete that project if, we're, if it were to move forward as well. Um, with that, the applicant did supply a few extra in, um, information slides at the Planning Commission hearing in May that addressed the Planning Commission's concerns at that time. They felt comfortable enough to move forward with the recommendation that you have before you um, this evening. So I think the commissioner had some additional questions for the applicant. Thank you. I'd ask the applicant to please uh, state your name and address for the record and present your application. I don't see that we have a Cabrin Mills present. It might be Mr. Dennis Mills or... We do have Dennis Mills. Thank you. Mr. Mills, would you present your application? Yeah, um, Dennis Mills here. We just trying to uh, be of support to some youth in our community uh, from the ages of 13 to 16, a uh, resident of having five uh, young men in there, staff 24 hours. Um, someone will be there, it will be very structured program from the time they raise to the time they go to bed. Um, community involvement. Um, and I think we might have, did you have a Yolanda Scott on as well? She is the founder of the program. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Mrs. Scott, would you like to present? She has just been promoted. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Scott. I'm mute. Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to work this device. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, well, like Elder Mills said, what, what our plan is to empower our community with some young boys that can give back. You know, we want to provide them with a safe living environment and educate them 
on the importance of upbuilding our community instead of tearing it down and, and educate them on just being an a upright citizen and just, we want to just educate them and empower them so that they can give back to our community and not be so destructive and inconsistent with their lives. Thank you. Uh, I'd ask Commissioner Townsend, did you have some questions for the applicants? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor uh, Gail Townsend, District One Commissioner. Good evening, Ms. Scott and, and Mr. Mills. Um, a couple of questions about this. You mentioned, um, Ms. Scott, that the tenants that would occupy the home are ages 13 to 16. How would these tenants be referred to you? Well, uh, like I said in the first city plan meeting, I reached out to uh, Northwest High School. I reached out to West and uh, even Washington High School just to see if we could uh, collaborate with them. And just, we want to just get referrals from the school. For some of the young boys that are struggling, you know, they may have hit a hard road or, you know, some, some, some single mothers sometimes get put in a predicament to where they may take on some a, a man or you know somebody in their house, their household, and it just causes friction in the house. So we we would work closely with the school system to try to help those young boys that are falling, those ones that don't want to fall by the wayside, those ones that want to make a difference in the community, that want to survive. So these referrals are coming to you through the school district. Yes, ma'am, we'll work with the school system as well as the churches in our community. You know, the boys and girls clubs, because, you know, like during the COVID, it was a lot of young kids, a lot of even boys and boys that were just trapped in the home. We don't have a clue as to what was going on with them. So just just, just with the boys club and, the, and, the, and everything opening back up, if we can get out into our community and connect with some of these, we can find some of those young boys that are we can get referrals for some of those young boys that are falling. And what is the plan once um, the tenants come into your home for them to stay? Uh, is there a time limitation or a particular goal uh, with yes, which yeah. oh. you would achieve and then they would go back to their uh, family members? Just talk some more about that, please. Yes, ma'am. So one of our goals is to empower them, you know, empower them with their education, you know, um, build their self-esteem. Some of these young boys just don't have the self-esteem, you know, uh, just to help empower them, encourage them to be all that they can be, educate them and provide a safe living. And yes, ma'am, it's a 12 to 24 month program and we do plan on them going back home once we can help them and empower them and bring them up, make them about themselves. So there's a, a 24 month expectation that yes. the, the, the uh, tenant would leave the facility. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Would any of the tenants um, have had uh, some type of intervention with uh, the juvenile system? Or no, you're just looking for uh, young men from the, through the school district and this church referral? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Tell me some more about who would be on the premises with your young tenants. Okay, so we have, um, I have several clergy men that are already, uh, that's already said that they would tutor them, they would be their mentors, I have uh, one of my uh, board members, he owns homes, so he would be more than willing to help them, show them how to paint. You know, I, I reached out to a, a young man. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry, man, we're losing you. You might have to repeat that. Oh, my God. She's on mute. This is Scott, you're on mute. 
Well, she get back on. Let me just add, it will be a mentor type program. So there won't be a lot of idle time. It'll be structured from the time they get up, follow them to the schools with the support of the referral. Uh, they kind of screen quite a bit. So just kind of help them be uh, more uh, self-sufficient and to be able to be, uh, make decisions where they can kind of progress through life. Uh, we have, uh, we just want to support the boys. And I appreciate that goal. I guess I'm, con uh, I'm, I'm more interested in hearing about what professionals you will have there in the home. How will that go? Will there be somebody there 24 seven? What are, you know, the, the credentials of those individuals? Okay. Well, Yolanda Scott, even now she's certified in drug and rehab. We also have, um, one of the ladies that she worked with the school district, she agreed to come and tutor. So most of our people will be certified during the screening process. It won't be just anybody coming off the street. It has to be somebody that can help the boy. And will there be someone there on the premises 24 seven? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, and these, young men are expected to still be in the school system during their tenure there at uh, 933? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Ms. Scott, are you a member of the Casey Healing Hands? I, I see that that's the entity to which 933 would be rented. Just explain a little bit of that situation to me. I didn't, I didn't hear you. What did you say? I, uh, I saw I in our information packet that um, the lease of this property at 933 is to an organization called KC Healing Hands. Is that what you are part of? Explain yes, your relationship to them, please. Yes, ma'am. KC uh, Healing Hands is an organization that, that I just woke up. Uh, it, it's a vision that I have. So Casey Healing Hands is something that, I don't know, it just imparted, it was just imparted it. in me one night. Yes, sir. and it was just imparted in me one night. I just woke up and I just started writing and I found myself putting this together. So it's just something that's near and dear to me and I just wanna give back to my community and try to take some pressure off of everybody else. If I can, just help, just do my part, give back. Okay, and again, I, I applaud your, your desire to uh, help these young men. Uh, I had some concern initially um, because I'm very aware, and I think Mr. Han has already mentioned that the location of this, of this uh, property is right across the street from uh, Parkwood Park and also right across the street from the swimming pool, which is a place where a lot of kids gather normally around this time of the year. So I'm very concerned about who would inhabit uh, 933. Uh, in the packet, it says that there will be no signage outside. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you expect to have only ages 13 through 16 there, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. At this time, uh, I don't have any more questions. Oh, one more. The only concern I, I, I might have, this may or may not apply, uh, because of the proximity of this property to a park, a major park in District 1 and the swimming pool, I would be concerned if uh, or that no inhabitant there at 933 would have any prior history of um, sexual uh, offenses. Uh, so that would be a concern for me. I do like the idea this is yeah. only for one year at a time that you're asking for that, but that would be a concern to me. Uh, unless there was some insurance, that would not be the case with any of your tenants. And, and yes, ma'am, if that will not be the case with any of our tenants. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. All right.
I'd ask if anyone from the public would like to speak in support of this. None were received. All right. Uh, anybody would like to speak in opposition? None were received as well, Mayor. All right. Anyone present in the, in the attendees? I see no hands raised. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the commission? I'll close the public hearing. Commissioner Ramirez has his hand up. Yes, Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Gunnar. And uh, thank you, Ms. Scott and Mr. Mills for coming before us tonight. Um, I only had a clarification question for Gunnar and it pertained to the, the environs review. Is that currently going or will that start if and when this is approved? Part of the, one of the conditions of approval, it's not in this summary, but one of the conditions of approval is to acquire a building permit and that building permit will trigger the environs review. Okay, so that review, has, has that started or will that start after it's been, if and when approved? Um, if or when approved, again, I, I, we've had some conversations with uh, Mr. Mills' son, Cabrin Mills, and I understand if you know, if he wanted to develop the property for this purposes, if not, he still owns the property to develop it. That obviously through the pictures you saw, there's some work that needs to be done, including in the on the exterior of the building. And it is that exterior work that needs the environs review. So it has not happened yet, but we expect that to happen shortly thereafter. Okay, thank you. That was the, my only uh, clarification I would like, I would have liked. Thank you. Commissioner Townsend. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioner Townsend, District 1. Uh, Ms. Scott, um, Mr. Mills, how many bedrooms uh, do you anticipate having in this in this home? Five. Four. Five. Four or five. How many? Go ahead, Mr. Mills. You got five, you've got four upstairs and there's another uh, place for downstairs. So have the potential of five. Five, okay. And you anticipate having how many residents at this time? Five. Okay. And how many staff would be there? Maximum two within a 24 hour setting other than uh, mentors and coach. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I would move to approve uh, the application with an additional stipulation that the ages uh, of the tenants be confined to the age range mentioned by Ms. Ms. Scott, Mr. Mills, I think they said 13 to 16. Yes, ma'am. And that at no time would any of the young Thanks. tenants there have any um, documented history of any sexual offense or sexual offense of any nature. But with that, I, those, those additional restrictions, I would move to approve. I am second. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. Any Roll call, Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. Aye. Townsend. Aye. Kiernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Markley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. The vote is nine to zero. That motion carries. Thank you. That takes us to item 20, SP 2021-015. I'd ask staff to make some opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. This case is for an SUP for the Mockingbird Lounge in the Strawberry Hill neighborhood. This is the second renewal for the bar, the first renewal for the live entertainment associated with that bar. Again, it's located in the central area master plan. You can see it here at this tight corner. At its original approval, uh, I would note that this uh, received a variance to have zero parking requirement. As you can see, there's no on-site parking. Uh, some of you may be familiar with this restaurant. Um, 
again, I think we added some uh, standard conditions of approval that we've been adding to several new live entertainment uses. You heard some of these in, the, I think, the last month where we were trying to uh, make sure that we're not impacting adjacent neighbors with um, some of the light and other illumination associated with things like a DJ or a karaoke or things of that nature that could happen. Um, we're also calling that the um, uh, live entertainment ends at 11 o'clock. There was a little bit of confusion with Mr. Castillo on this case as well. Looking back into the record, um, we only in the last six months started doing summaries of our conditions of approval in our staff reports. Before then, you sort of had to kind of dig for it in the back and forth that you see in our staff reports. Essentially, what we tried to do is just take what the applicant says they're going to do or says they want to use their live entertainment for and then create a condition around it. Mr. Castillo, at, at that time in the last renewal and before for, or the first um, uh, request for the live entertainment did say he would have a karaoke night that would end around one o'clock. Everything else ended at 10. So in this condition of approval, um, we set it at 11. I believe Mr. Castillo has an issue with that time. I think at the end of the day for staff, we're amenable to potential changes to these conditions of approval as per the applicant's request. I would note that the applicant did not respond to the draft staff report and made this comment at that time. He was also not in attendance at the planning commission hearing. So that is why we're bringing this up here today. I would recommend that we remand this back to the planning commission to address those conditions of approval accordingly. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Castillo, would you like to present your application? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, this is Daniel Castillo from 204 Orchard Street, um, the Mockingbird Lounge. Um, I just had some concerns. Uh, the way I read the conditions was we need to stop all live in, in entertainment at 11 p.m. and have no entertainment on the patio. And that's uh, just kind of goes against what we've been practicing. I just wanted to so flesh that asking, out. You would ask that we remand this back to the Planning Commission? Yes, please. Thank you. All right, any comments or questions from the commission? Commissioner, Commissioner McKiernan has his hand up, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I do think we need to have a public hearing on this, but I, by virtue of a little bit of uh, communication and misunderstanding, I do think and do absolutely support sending this back to the Planning Commission to clarify expectations, to clarify the stipulations, and to make sure that we're all clear going forward. So I would support the move back to Planning Commission and make that motion at such an appropriate time. Second, Phil Brooks. All right. So, Misty, do I need to, since this is a vote to send it back to planning and zoning, there'll be further public discussion. Is there, do I need to open up for public comment? Um, no, Mayor, you can send it back. There can be more discussion at planning and zoning. Thank you very much. We have. In that case, Mr. Mayor, I would move to send this item back to the Planning Commission. Phil Brooks again, second. Okay, you have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Roll call, Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. Aye. Townsend. Aye. McKiernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Barkley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. The vote is nine to zero. That motion carries. I believe that it was the last of our set asides. If not, correct me now. All right. Next is our planning and zoning non consent agenda. Item number one is. COZ 2021-010, Lola Thomason, for a change of zone from R1 single family district to R2 two family district to bring an existing duplex into compliance at 2716 and 2718 South 53rd Street. The Planning Commission recommended approval to RP2 planned two family district by a vote of five to two. Mr. Hand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, this is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, this, like all of the items on our non-consent agenda, are here because we did not get a unanimous vote from the Planning Commission. This one was a 5-2 vote of the Planning Commission. The two consent, uh, uh, dissenting votes were Commissioner Conley and Commissioner Jones. Um, again, this is to legalize a, 
um, a non-conforming du non-conforming duplex in the Turner neighborhood. Um, so it is technically an up zoning. Most of the zoning around this is R1. There is some multifamily zoning within about a block away from this. Um, so I think it sort of passes the snuff test on spot zoning. It's also a non-conforming use that's trying to legalize. Essentially, Mrs. Thomason is trying to sell the property. To do that, to have a buyer that has a federal loan, it has to have the right zoning associated with the use at which it does not. So she's trying to correct that so she can sell her property. The issue here is that the legal non-conforming building and use also has legal non-conforming parking requirements. So to go from R1 to R2, in this case, um, R2 requires two parking spaces for each unit, one of which has to be covered. And that is just not provided on the property. Originally staff had recommended denial because Ms. Tomlinson had said that she would not um, meet that standard condition enough times in writing and to staff that we sort of had no choice but to recommend denial because she was telling us she wasn't gonna comply. Um, but through the planning commission, we worked through all that. And um, although we cannot add a uh, condition of approval related to the disclosures, it is a part of the disclosure to a seller that things of this nature would be conveyed. In fact, we have had contact with the real estate, uh, the listing agent who has confirmed that anything that happens tonight will need to be disclosed to that buyer. So that concern from the planning commission was covered. Um, we also requested the planning commission and they agreed that instead of the requested R2 that we add uh, this as a plan district in the future, there was a little bit of both community support from adjacent neighbor, as well as I'm gonna not call it necessarily opposition, but certainly some community concern um, uh, about, the, this, um, uh, about this use. So we felt that adding RP2 would allow, give us a, an additional sort of layer of review if anything were to happen with this property yeah. in the future. Again, a plan district requires a plan review if you're changing anything on the site. Um, and so this is how we could track the parking uh, updates. This is how we could track if somebody uh, decided to tear down the structure and build a different type of R2, we could do it in a way that would better fit um, the neighborhood character if we had that planning district um, associated with it. And so. We'll hang commission recommended approval for that uh, as such. Um, there are no NOVs on the property and staff agrees with the recommendation of the planning commission for approval. All right, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Tonneson, would you please step forward and present your application? Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so you're asking me to present what my feelings are on this. Is that what you're asking for now? What you're, what you're asking to do. I was asking for this to be zoned R2 because we need to have it R2 for it to pass a federally funded loan. However, um, we at one point wanted to build on to both sides and make it um, a one car garage on the south side and a three car and we brought plans in in 2006 to do that and that was denied. So we ended up finding a property and we ended up buying two acres in the country and did not proceed with that and appeal it. If this happens, anybody that the, the plan is in the house, it's a beautiful plan, it would upgrade the neighborhood, would want to do that. It would probably limit the new buyer from updating and upgrading this property further if they chose to. Um, we had no idea that, that this was going to happen. We put $600 worth of gravel on the driveway and planning that to make sure that there was enough because at one time the city wanted more gravel on, on the driveway and sent us a letter for that. So um, under the circumstances, we are willing to go with the R2 and allow a new owner to be able to make that decision if they want to build on, if they, but just to stick a garage and a, and a two like this in the, because the, 
it would have to be 15 feet from the property line also, I read. So you're gonna be moving it over toward the house and in the middle of the backyard. And it just doesn't sound, seem like it would be something if I were wanting to buy a property that I would want somebody to do that and limit my abilities to build onto the property and do it in a proper manner. So we're asking for the R2 so that we can sell the property, but we're not asking for an RP2. And we feel that under the circumstances when this subdivision was built in 1958, we're asking the question, why was this not addressed since this was this number one lot had a duplex on it and was put into a single family restricted area and left uncovered. And here 60 some years later, we're having an issue selling this property because it's zoned incorrectly and a buyer lost a lot of money and had to walk away because his loan was denied. So we are wanting the ability to sell this and allow a new owner the ability to come in and, and decide if they want a garage in the middle of the backyard or if they want to build a garage on instead of forcing them to do something that could limit their ability to improve the property later. So that's our what we are Thank asking. Thank you, ma'am. I, I can't address the question of why this was not addressed in 1958. And this was not part of the city at that time that was still part of the Shawnee Township. And so under the county, planning, there was none of this, uh, the kind of controls that city planning department brings to it. So that's that's the answer to your question. Why was it not addressed in 1958? At this time, I would ask, are there any questions for Mr. Thomason by the commission? All right, seeing none, is there anyone present would like to speak in support of this petition? We're seeing none, Mayor. Thank you. Is there anyone present would like to speak in opposition? We're seeing none as well, Mayor. Thank you. Then I would entertain a motion by the commission. Move to accept the recommendation of the planning commission. For Mayor, for Mayor, second. We have a motion and a second. Any roll call, please. Roll call. Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. Aye. Townsend. Aye. McKiernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Markley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. The vote is nine to zero. That motion carries. Thank you. That takes us to item SP 2021-028. Megan Duma for a special use permit for the continuation of a short-term rental Airbnb at 2706 Espen Lob Lane. The Planning Commission recommended denial by a vote of five to one. Mr. Hand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, again, this is for a special use permit for a short-term rental. This is their first renewal. Um, again, this was a five to one vote at the Planning Commissioner. Commissioner Miller was the lone vote of approval for the special use permit. This is also in the Turner neighborhood off Esplanade um, Lane. I think the primary issue with the property here is there was quite a bit of neighborhood opposition to the case, somewhat unrelated to the special use permit itself, more related to an adjacent, uh, an, another use that was happening on the property, which you can see in these pictures. Ms. Duma was in the process of creating both a garden um, uh, on the property for her own purposes, as well as chopping a bunch of wood, wood that she would use at her primary residence for um, a stove, uh, a wood burning stove that she had just purchased at that time. Um, I think that the neighbors were more concerned about this property being used for a commercial business, lawn care, tree removal, tree trimming type business, um, which if it was being used as a commercial property, uh, commercial use property would need its own separate SUP um, accordingly. Um, there was a lot of neighborhood opposition, in fact, uh, regarding that. Since the um, meeting, Ms. Duma has cleaned up the property to a degree. We uh, went out there um, today to verify the progress. There had certainly been some progress in so, in so much as she'd organized some of her wood piles as well as sort of finished the work that she had on her garden. Um, 
I think at the end of the day, the staff does not agree with the recommendation of the Planning Commission. We do believe that these two issues can be bifurcated and that we can address um, sort of the, the issues surrounding um, this other business on, at the location and, and look at the special use permit for the short-term rental in and of itself. I believe the commission or the majority of the commission, I should say, saw a property owner who was not using, um, who was not being a good neighbor for one reason and carried that over to the other special use permit, which does certainly have a nexus to it, uh, depending on which way you look at it. Um, if this process, if the commission seeks to, were to overturn the planning commission's recommendation of denial, it would not only require eight votes, but at that time staff would actually request that some amendments be made to our conditions of approval that we had carried over since the planning commission hearing. Uh, so with that staff actually recommends approval. Thank you. Mrs. Dumas, would you like to present your application, please? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, um, I guess like city planning said, the, the neighbor, <laughs> this is kind of what I said at the last meeting as well, but what happened was I, I bought a property that was, you know, a little bit over an acre and I did have, and I still do goals for it to be an organic vegetable garden and use it to like for the firewood and things that are legal uses. What ended up happening was, sorry, I have a dog and three kids here right now, but um, what ended up happening was um, we got more wood than what we needed, what we could stack at the time. And so it piled up and like any, if it, I'm sure a lot of you guys are married or whatever, it just was a miscommunication and too much got stacked there. And I apologize to all the neighbors and I, I did feel badly because I love this property. Um, and in fact, I'm under contract or not, I just closed on Tuesday with respect to the adjoining property at 2725 uh, Glen Rose Lane, where I'm building a, a new build single family residence um, right behind this property. And that's the first land bank property ever purchased in this way from the Kansas City, Kansas Land Bank. I'm there every weekend. I care about it a lot. And so the the firewood stacked up, it looked terrible. It still doesn't look great, but from May 10th to, to this week, we were able to clean everything up and we literally busted our butts because it was so rainy this month. Um, and so we still, we still have plans to replant grass everywhere. And the neighbors were just mad about how it looked and it doesn't look bad or it, it still is muddy, but I may as this may has been pretty rough with rain. So we're getting it all planted and all, all good and it will be beautiful. Um, I think the issues were all about the, you know, the wood piles and having dug in the ground, not finished it. And so I think I've resolved all of those and as fast as I think probably humanly possible. And so I'd ask that this not stop the short term rental, which we really didn't have any complaints about. Um, and so I'd really appreciate that opportunity. Thank you. Uh I will now open the public hearing. Is there anyone present who would like to speak in support of this application? We're seeing none, Mayor. Thank you. Again, when I ask this, I'm assuming you're also including anybody who might have written in. Yes, there was none. Okay, thank you. Or thank you. Is there anybody present who would like to speak in opposition? We are seeing one. All right. Uh, please state your name and city of residency, please. Can you hear me? Okay, go ahead. Okay, my name is George Higgins. My address is 2540 Espen Law Blaine. And I'm here with a group of neighbors who are in opposition to the to the special use permit uh, for that property. Uh, we still have the same concerns we had when we appeared before the planning commission. Uh, as you know, this special use permit for this property expired in December, yet for the past six months, it's being used as a, as a uh, Airbnb, as well as the tree trimming service. Um, and there's still vehicles and equipment from the tree trimming service being parked on the property. Uh, granted, it has been cleaned up some, and I realize there's 
been a lot of rain since since May 10th. So we're, we're, we appreciate the effort that's being made so far. Uh, but as far as the, the big stack of wood, if this wood's not being used on the property, perhaps it should be moved to her primary residence where it's being used and kind of help clean up our neighborhood a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna take up a lot of your time. If there's anyone else that would like to speak there. One more. Uh, I think we have one more that would like to speak. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, please state your name and city of residency. I believe you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm. I have. I have a lot of paperwork on this particular um, problem that we're having here in the neighborhood. Um, all of the neighbors are opposed to an Airbnb. We have done our research and when people rent Airbnbs, therefore we have strangers in our neighborhood that we don't know. And if you can get on the internet and look, there's a lot of drug trafficking going on with Airbnbs, sex trafficking, pedophiles, and late night parties. Uh, I had a whole lot of other things to say, but uh, last night I was walking my dog and a lady pulled me aside. She lives directly across the street from the Airbnb. And she has a wonderful little home and it has two uh, rocking chairs out front. Her husband now has terminal cancer. And every night they used to go out and sit on their front porch and drink coffee or iced tea and watch the deer on that property. And that was like their thing to do. And now he won't even come out on the front porch because when you look across the street, it isn't just a small mess that needs to be cleaned up. It is a disaster. And we do appreciate some of the cleanup that's been done. Having said that, it's not supposed to be there in the first place. Every morning there are a truck, a red truck, another red truck, sometimes a little red car, a Smitty van. They park on the grass. That's why it's so muddy. I have tons and tons of pictures to prove what I'm talking about. Then <laughs> we also got on the uh, internet and looked at, um, the, it's called Waterfall Cottage. And we came across the conversation and I have the names of the people uh, that are in the conversation with Meg Megan Dumas. And they talk about the plans for that property. And we're very concerned about the plans, uh, yurts, uh, tents, tree houses. Ma'am, you have uh, one minute remaining. Okay, paramilitary training was mentioned and uh, a homeless camp. So I'm not real sure what her plans are for that property, but that upset us a lot to even think that somebody would even consider doing that. But uh, it did wake us all up and we are all cleaning our yards up and trying to make this a better neighborhood. And that piece of property is the worst piece of property and the biggest eyesore that we have. Thank you. We have Mayor, one, if, one, Mayor, one if more I may, I'd like to ask the last speak in speak, opposition. Mayor, if I could first ask the last speaker, state her name for the record. Yes. And see my name, yes, my name is Betty McGill. 2762 Espen Thank you. We have one more neighbor. My name is Cheryl Mendez. I live at 2556 Espen And I walk the neighborhood every day. And I walk past this property and the trenches, it's not a garden, it's they were trenches. I watched the man fill the trenches full of wood uh, chips and then bury them. There was nothing planted. It was a dump for the uh, wood chips. The property being cleaned up far as wood, I don't see that so much commendable because that was there because of his tree service. It was operated without a license, without a permit. So when this violation came up, they run to clean it up. I don't see any kudos in that. But as far as it being what it used to be, it's destroyed our community here. And at the point of the things that was said the last time, she stated many times she looked at Prairie Village when she was speaking about the firewood. If you look in Prairie Village's ordinances, they do not allow stacking of firewood. They do not allow 
multiple vehicles parked in their driveway so their community looks beautiful. Why is this happening to ours? Because she lives in another county. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Bynum has her hand up, Mayor. Yes, Commissioner Bynum. Thank you, I have a lot of questions, so I'm going to enumerate them and, and Mayor, if you'll help uh, guide uh, to the proper person, I guess, for answers. Uh, for the property owner, if I'm understanding what you said, you are using this property that you own, that you've had an Airbnb special use permit for, also to create your personal garden and store your personal wood? That's a question, I guess, to the owner. Uh, to the neighbors, I heard behaviors being seen that cause opposition, uh, both the activity of the mulch and wood stacking among possibly other tree trimming activities. And then I heard vehicles. And I wonder if there are other behaviors you are seeing uh, that are causing you concern in addition to those two things you mentioned, things you had researched on the internet uh, that are alarming. And I didn't know if you were referencing that you believe those things are happening at this property. And are you opposed both to the Airbnb and the garden and wood storage? Um, and finally, Mr. Hand, you mentioned you would be in favor of an approval with amendments, but you didn't tell us what amendments. So have a lot of questions. And those are them. So Ms. Duma, if you want to begin by answering the question. Yes, and again, for the record, my name is Megan Duma and I live at 4520 West 65th Street in Prairie Village, which is eight minutes from the property. And I'm there every single weekend, I'm there a lot. Um, so the first, with respect to the pedophiles and paramilitary, I'm not even sure what was going on with that. Um, I would recommend that all um, members look at my reviews for this property. I have hosted, when COVID struck is when I opened the property, which was April of last year. So my short-term or rental permit really didn't even kick in until April. And then short-term rentals were decimated. The first people that I rented to was a couple that was in Kansas City that, that got kicked out of the Hope House, which is a free place for cancer patients. And I let them live there at a very reduced rate, even for market long-term rents. And they were there for um, almost three months. The second family that lived there later in the year was a family that was building a house somewhere in Kansas City and them, them and their three children needed a place to live. They were there for another three months. This largely has not even been a short-term rental uh, just by virtue of what happened over the last year and a half. Now, please look at my reviews for this particular property. All you will see is family people, um, out of towners that are here for um, to support military members that live here, things like that. Um, I run a very tight ship. I have a 24 seven property management company. So when I'm asleep with my kids, if there's anything that goes on, it gets taken care of. All this, um, everything that Miss Betty said is just, unfortunately, a lot of, if you search it on Google, you will find whatever answer you want. That's not what happens here. I am there with my three children all the time and that is not what happens. So with respect to the short-term rental permit, um, I have not, there have been no party complaints. There have been no parties. Um, I have someone that deals with the trash every week. I've got a, the same cleaning crew that I've had for three years. It all operates in a very clean and great way that's better than most long-term renters ever hope for. So let's leave the short-term rental for a minute and turn to the, the garden, which I'm allowed to do by virtue of owning the property. I don't tell you what to do on your property with respect to a garden, and I'm legally allowed to do it. And the stacking of firewood, I'm legally allowed to do that. Those are both not something that I have to ask special permission. This is not the homeowners association of Eskimov. I apologize. I made amends and I fixed it. That you guys are still coming after me is not fair and it's not right. 
now the garden that has been planted is was a garden that is, was done by somebody who is a very, very good gardener and farmer. And the reason that trenches were dug and mulch was put in the trenches is a natural waterway to keep the plants watered without having to put in a watering system that costs tens of thousands of dollars. So this was all done with a lot of thought, a lot of expense, and it will be beautiful. I'm sorry it's not right now. Construction is not pretty. That's kind of where I'm at on this. And I'm, um, I, I want my neighbors to like me, but not at the expense where they're telling me exactly what I can do with the property that I own, that I paid for. Thank you. Commissioner Bynum, would you repeat your question for the uh, residents? Yes. The behaviors that are being witnessed that caused the opposition, I heard vehicles and opposition to the, um, the garden and wood storage that I think might also have been referenced as a tree trimming operation. Um, so I was curious if those were the items causing opposition or if there were additional behaviors being seen on the property um, that, that, that are causing the opposition. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, so uh, because of the rain, it hasn't happened lately, but the tree, uh, yes, she does own the property and yes, she can do whatever she wants to do with her property. We understand that. Uh, what we don't understand is a tree service bringing in big stumps and half trees and burning them in a pit and then going home and the pit is smoldering. That would be one. Two, she talked, said something just now about the paramilitary training. That is from her own direct website. And I do have those pages if anybody ever wants to see them. Uh, I didn't make it up. Um, uh, I have their names and everything. So we did screenshot it. So it was a conversation she did have with uh, about four different gentlemen about the homeless camp and about the paramilitary training and that causes us great concern uh we do have a man that he's not here tonight that lives directly across the street and he does have to get up and go to work in the morning and yes there has been uh late night not loud partying but late night that does keep him up with the lights on and the you know the noise and um I'm trying to think what was the other question. <laughs> oh, uh, I had heard the opposition I heard from the neighbors who spoke. Uh, in addition to this website that you're referencing, which you're you're also making me wonder, did you did you provide any of that documentation to our staff? But again, that's an, a new question. The opposition I heard is vehicles and the wood storage and what one of you referenced as a tree trimming business. So I'm wondering, are there other behaviors being seen on the property in addition to what's been voiced by those speaking opposed? Uh, no, there's not. Um, just the, the tree, the, as far as the Airbnb goes, our problem with the Airbnb, whether it's her Airbnb or anybody's Airbnb, is it's just the normal thing these days to not want strangers in your neighborhood. We have children that live here. We have a man that lives directly across the street with cancer here that we have. This is our neighborhood. This is our private neighborhood. We live here. She does not live here. We live here. And so if there's a chance that sex trafficking could be going on in that house. And I, how do you bet that? How do you, how do you promise me that that will never happen? I don't know. And so we don't want it in our neighborhood, plain and simple. Um, it's a personal, we've all lived here 35 and 40 years. And this is the, the worst thing we've come across. One more. May I speak? Hello, may yes. I speak? Yes. Uh, my, I'm Cheryl Mendez again. Uh, 
my question is this, uh, she never, in the last meeting, she acted like they were just cutting wood for her little burning fireplace until I had a Facebook advertisement that was posted that they ran troughs or troughs tree service from this address. This is the address that was given for the service, 2706 Espinal. During that conversation with the planning uh, commission, one of your uh, commissioners or whoever that was on the thing looked it up on Google and she says, yes, I see it here. He's advertising his tree business is on Espinal, running without a license and without a permit. Stating that, then she backtracked. I'm just saying if there's no truth in the forwardness of the first conversation, why would we believe her in the second one? When it's just being adjusted and things taken care of as she's being faced with them, with the violations and the questions asked by the community. Yeah. And she's still running it. And she is still running it and has been since she was even denied last meeting. So I see no truth coming forward here of caring about this neighborhood. You have to show by action speaks louder than all the talk you do. And I don't see the respect for Wyandotte County, which we have been residents in for over 50 years of coming in from somewhere else. And that's fine, she bought the property, but due respect, I would think be to the neighbors that have been here for all these years and kept this little hidden valley that she treasures looking as it does. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from the commission? Mayor, I think Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Ramirez has his hand up. Thank you, Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Gunnar. Thank you, Ms. Dumas. Um, I am the commissioner for this area. This is my district. And I have a lot of questions. Um, the first two questions are just more of part of the conditions of approval you have on there, Garner. The six, five and six, are those normal or are those just because of this application? Governor and Director of Planning and Urban Design, number five and six are the standard conditions we've been applying to all short-term rentals. Okay, I get the that you may have put it in on others, but I, for personally, this is the first time I've seen where they've been put on the actual conditions of approval. So I just wanted to make sure that those were routine to everybody. Yep. Um, other questions, uh, and these are based on everything that I've heard so far from Ms. Dumas and opposition. Is, Ms. Dumas, is the property being currently used as a short-term rental? As some of your, as some of the neighbors have stated, is it currently being used? May I answer? Yes. Uh, yes, sir, it is. Okay. It is your, is it the permit that it's expired, has it not? The permit did expire and honestly like it, it in Johnson County where I have um, actually I don't um, I used to have short-term rentals before I got divorced and in Kansas City Missouri uh, Kansas City Kansas is the only place that requires this amount of a process to get a short-term rental permit and so because of COVID and the fact that I didn't operate it for so long as a short-term rental I got it in December it never operated in, as a short-term rental until probably uh, July or no, gosh, not even that I'd say September, October of 2020. So I, it just slipped my mind not to, that my permit was up and there was no notifications or anything like that. Cause everything was messed up because of COVID. Um, and I hadn't been operating as a short-term rental because everything had been over 30 days. So I, I do apologize for that, but I, that that's the reason. Okay. So just to clarify, it is being currently used as a short-term rental. Even yes. though, even though your license and permit to do so has expired, that's true. That okay. Mr. Ramirez, that, yeah, I, this is this is going to hand director plan urban design. Yes. The the pro practice and protocol for short term rentals in the unified government is if it's been approved once and they come back and seek a renewal, we allow them to operate to see if that renewal is or not. If the renewal were to not be approved today, 
uh, this evening or, or what have you, we would then follow up with Ms. Duma to, in, to terminate the activity on the property as it relates to the short-term rental. So we've, we've allowed her to use it in between the gap. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for that clarification, um, Gunnar. Um, other, uh, several other questions pertaining to what the, your neighbors in opposition have said. And you did mention it at one time in the beginning. What specific plans do you have for the property? Uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of plans for it. Um, as part of my application to the Kansas City, Kansas Land Bank, I told them I was going to build an organic vegetable garden. Um, I'm building a single family residence um, that's kind of like a funky, for lack of a better term, barn dominium at 2725 Glen Rose Lane. Um, that's already been approved by the UG. I, the UG signed over the deed to me on Tuesday. Um, I've got lots of plans for it. I'm very committed to this neighborhood. I'm, I'm sad. I've never had anyone yell at me like these neighbors yelled at me. I'm sad and upset about it, like freaked out um, because I do love this space and I'm there with my family all the time. So um, besides the garden, building the single family residence, being the first of any person ever to do this in Kansas City, Kansas, um, it's a good program and I'm happy to be the first. And um, I like to continue to operate the um, Espenlob address as a short-term rental in the time being. And yes, my, my partner does park his trucks there. They're less than 10,000 pounds. Everything I'm doing right now meets codes. The one thing we did that we shouldn't have done is dump too much stuff that we couldn't process into firewood. I'm not breaking any laws. I'm not doing anything against codes right now, nothing. Okay, thank you. Um, one, one thing I do want to bring up because it was brought up by a, several of your neighbors. When you do go to Google, and look up Tufts Tree Service, it does show the address that we are currently talking about. And, yes. but why is it showing that that's the location of the business when it's not? Um, well, I mean, it, it's just like being a, a plumber or a, I mean, I guess if we, maybe we should have had, and I don't, I don't even know, cause he just moved his business very recently um, to this area like a home license to operate. Like it's like if you're a plumber and you bring your plumbing truck home or you're a painter, or like I said, like I have like whoever works for the UG on the street, God bless them. They bring their work truck home. This is the same thing. Um, this is like, I, I, they, I know they say I don't live there. This is not a Johnson County versus a Wyandotte County issue. I was born and raised in Wyandotte County. I love Wyandotte County. Um, so I don't like that they're couching that way because it's not true. Um, this is a place that I bought that served my personal needs, but also could help me pay for it by virtue of the short-term rental. And I like buying old furniture. So I like doing short-term rentals. Okay. I, 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 I'm going to push back a little on the statement when painters or plumbers or even our police officers who may take home cars or our mayor or whoever, they, they don't have to get special permission from the city. They don't have to get a permit. It's their property, they're parking it on their property. So there's no process for that. But I, I do find it concerning that when you look online for this business, that address pops up. Because if, let's say, I see a plumber down the street from where I live, a next door neighbor, and I look up the name of the business that's on his plumber's truck, it's going to show where the business is registered at. They're, that's their home base. They are registered with the county and the state as that's their address. But this Tufts Tree Service, it seems it's from Lawrence is not registered with Wyandotte County, but when you look it up online, it has this address as it being the address of the business itself. And so I'm trying, I'm finding it very hard to fix that disconnect. Cause it does seem when you look at it and look it up, it seems that that, that address 2706 Espen Mob is the address of that business. 
Commissioner Ramirez may I reply? Yes. Um, this is kind of like just vulnerable, but truth. Like um, my partner left Lawrence and sold his farm um, at the end of, or middle of 2020. And so like in, gosh, I think July or August is when we were trying to figure out where, how we would live together and he'd move here. And so he moved in about probably August or September to Espenlob. And because I was using it as an Airbnb, um, there was nobody getting mail there. So he just thought I'll use the mailing address. It wasn't like this, some contrived, like he's a, he's a one person shop. Sometimes he has an employee, but that's like three days a week. He has an employee. If this, we're not talking about some big contrived, like we're, we never changed addresses or did anything weird. Um, it was just a couple that is trying to figure out how to make life work together. And that's how, what we came up with that. And that's the truth. Okay. And uh, so you're saying he used the address to receive mail pertaining to Tufts tree service, correct? Yeah. Only because it was no one else is using the mail. It's an Airbnb and Airbnb people don't get mail. Okay. But I, and I think this may, yes, this is the correct one, but I see, but when you go to Tufts tree, so the website, he has a PO box mm. in Lawrence. And uh, uh, that's, that's, uh, that, that's very old. It needs to be updated. It's not current. Like if you sent something there, it wouldn't get to us, whether it's in Prairie Village or at Eskimo Lab for probably three months because they'd have to get forwarded. Everything's been forwarded. Like we're in the process of converging lives and that's just a byproduct of it. We didn't necessarily think about just because we're parking there and getting mail there that, oh my God, we have to, you know, sign up with the UG and that's, that's our bad. That's totally our bad. And we'll do that. Everything that I've done wrong, I will fix. And it's not, I didn't even know I had a notice of violation because it got sent to Espinal, but it didn't get sent here to Prairie Village, only eight minutes away. Um, but I, it's not like I'm trying to make amends after the fact. I do, I, I am investing in this community. I do care about it. And I hope someday to even, you know, wave and actually smile and be happy with everyone who does not like me right now. Mm -hmm. and, and, I'm, and I'm not discounting that, you know, you do care for the community. But one question, one last question pertaining to this topic. If this is your partner's business, why did he not use your guys's primary residence address as receiving mail whereas a Airbnb that's in a different county, yes, it's eight minutes away, but it, it's in a different county. Why did he choose that address to receive mail where he could have used his primary address? Again, another honest answer that's vulnerable. Like my ex-husband still gets mail here. Um, I ignore the mail here. It's like largely spam and junk. And it was just easier because he was parking his truck there to have his stuff shipped there with respect to that portion of it. If you guys need us to change the address, we can change the address. Nobody comes there. No clients come there. Everything is based on people calling him, him going out to their homes, seeing if their trees need help and then helping them. He does everything on the, on the customer's property. And then he dumps and will only dump from now on at Missouri Organic. Never again at Espenlob. We just got out of hand with the, what we thought we were doing. Okay. That's, that's what happened. It was just like, there, we got too much mail here. That's crazy. Like you're not using Esplanade. Is that cool? And I'm like, that's fine. I didn't think it would come down to this much publicity or this much, you know, pushback. And that's, that's the truth. Okay. Thank you. Um, overall, I, I am still having trouble with the disconnect of, it, it seems like there, there was a lot of hoops you went through where you didn't have to go through those hoops. And I, that's where I'm having trouble with the disconnect of the website. And you look up the tree, you look up the business itself and it does have the, web, the, the address 2706 Espen Law, where your partner could have used his primary address to receive mail for his business rather than sending it to a short-term rental that's in an entirely different county. Yes, again, eight minutes away, 
but it's still in a different county. Um, I, 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 I'm having trouble putting that, resolving that disconnect. Because like I said, <laughs> like, Sorry. like I, no, you're fine. Like I said in the beginning, it seems there were a lot of hoops you went through where you really didn't have to go through a lot of those hoops. And I'm, and I'm gonna to touch on something you said about Wyandotte County and how we deal and how we do our STRs. Yes, we're very stringent. We have strict regulations and rules on how we do it is because we wanna make sure that these these short-term rentals fit in the neighborhood and character of the neighborhood. That's why we have very stringent regulations and rules. And I uh, support all of the current regulations that we have. So that is, uh, that is why we do it. it. It's not saying that Johnson County or KC Mode doesn't, but it's just, we like to take the extra step and the extra care in ensuring that any short-term rental fits the character of the neighborhood. That has always been my uh, view but I, I, I'm, I, I'm gonna pass, pass it on to any other commissioners who may have any other question, questions at the moment. I'm, I'm just, like I said, still having trouble with that disconnect. And, and, and I know a lot of this stuff isn't connected to the short-term rental itself, but it, I I need a minute to think a little bit more. I don't know if any other commissioners of Commissioner Philbrook does, but um, you may respond, Ms. Dumas, if you have any other responses, but I, I need a minute to think and to continue looking over everything that I have in front of me at the moment. Thank you. The, the only response I have, Commissioner Ramirez, is that if it's about reforwarding mail here, that's fine. We can do that. Uh, Chris just parked there and it was easy for him to grab it there and it just be a little bit separate. If that's the only issue, we can that can be a condition we can take care of. Please, I would beg you if you're on your computer right now, go look at the reviews, go look at the people that have seen this neighborhood and seen Kansas City, Kansas, the families from like the regional area that have traveled here, but also from other places and look who stays there and look what they say about the neighborhood. Look what, look what I'm actually bringing as opposed to what everyone thinks I'm taking away. I'm getting people to come here in my pamphlets. I, I send them to slaps. I send them to a lot of places in KCK. They would not have that experience and there would just be Kansas City, Missouri issue if I didn't get to do this. And that's one good thing for KCK. Um, so just go look at my reviews for this particular listing and see the people that Kansas City, Kansas has helped and enjoy the beauties of this property and this neighborhood. Commissioner Philbrook. Okay, so for me, I see two separate issues. I see an issue around a business, and I see it, an issue around the second business and two different businesses. One which is advertised as having tree company operating out of that at that location, but also then the separate one being your. Um, rental well i i don't know if i have any problems with the rental but what i do think is that for us to deal with this as a commission that possibly we need to split these two issues and deal with them individually because we are two entirely different issues on this and i don't gutter you want to gunner you want to give me some feedback on that Yeah, I think, uh, again, this is going to hinder our planning and urban design. Um, Commissioner Philbrook, I think that the parking of the truck, I think once the cleanup is finalized in whatever way, shape, and form is decided tonight, I think it comes down to the parking of the truck. And the parking of the truck in the code is a bit of a gray area. Um, you can park a, you can park a, you know, a, a business related truck in your driver's driveway as long as it's not over 10,000 pounds. What we talked about at the planning commission um, was that the second that anything off that truck gets put onto that property, including the trailer, 
that is a commercial use of the property that requires its own SUP. So there's a lot of fine lines in there that I think is confusing part of this issue. I think if the truck were to stay, we would certainly need a home occupation um, business license for this um, for, for this tree service business. Um, I think if you read the letter of the of the code, um, there is some concern that this is not her primary residence that she's driving her work vehicle to and then leaving overnight and then moving forward. What an accessory use of your property is, um, is addressed um, uh, in the code. And I think, again, this, is, this lands in a bit of a gray area where I think it ultimately turns into what I would call a neighborly issue. Um, so, so Gunner, like to me, if the truck continues to park there, she's going to continue to get complaints from her neighbors, whether it's allowed or not allowed or what have you. And I think that, I think that's, so, I, think I, so I just want to share something with everybody. So at one time I was married to a plumber who had his truck at our home. We, because he parked it there and that was the address he used for his business. You know, and you don't do plumbing in your own house. You know how that is. You plumbing for everybody else. That's the way it is. Anyway, so you have a business license, you know, to do business from that from that location. And so I guess, you know, like you say, there's a lot of shades of gray around this about how we should be doing things. And so I guess what, what I'm asking for in this is that instead of having all these shades of gray, that that maybe um, all of this, all these questions around the business get cleaned up by not having it there, okay? Um, and for that person to actually find an address that they want to call their business and pay those taxes and those licenses, versus trying to take a shortcut. That's my opinion. I just, you know, I want this to get cleaned up. The place looks nice as far as, from what I can tell, for the um, short time rental. But with all of this other stuff, all this other slurry and morass around it, it really does muddy the water. And I can understand why the neighbors would be upset. But I would, is there some way we can just split this out, Gunner? The conversation around the property next to her and that well, property. That, yeah, and I think that this this gets to so a question that Commissioner Bynum asked a little bit earlier that I didn't I haven't had the chance to answer quite yet. So if, if the commission were to move forward and overturn the recommendation of the planning commission and seek some sort of approval, not only would it need the required eight votes, um, but the way that some of these conditions of approval were written did not sort of um, fully flush out what we've heard both tonight and even even kind of late in the planning commission hearing earlier this month. And I'll go over those sort of individually. One, the recommended condition of approval, if the plan, uh, board of commissioners decides to move forward as with that motion, uh, says wood burning is not allowed on the property. That is because that was written as such because they were burning wood on the property to get rid of some of it. That's not necessarily wrong, right? I think what was wrong was I don't think they got a burn permit. In fact, we know we didn't get a burn permit because a burn permit doesn't allow you to leave um, a fire on overnight, right? And that's what we've heard reported from the from the neighborhood. So we would ask that that be amended to say a wood burn wood burning is not allowed on the property without a permit. And that permit obviously comes with its own conditions, so on and so forth. It's not that you can't do it. It's that you got to do it when it's allowed and how it's allowed in the unified government. And then secondly, we would ask that we actually add a condition of approval that would be very specific that this special use permit is for that specific business, the short-term rental and no other one to keep it completely separate. If the commission felt that there more needed to occur, I think you could very easily add a condition of approval that basically said, this is the only thing that could happen on this pro operate on this property. Or if you wanted to be more specific that you can't do your tree business or anything related to that tree business on this property. That's simple. Uh, Good. Thank you for making that distinction, and I and I appreciate you being able to separate things out because that's what we need to do, so we can. So yeah. Is there anybody else in the commission? 
in the chamber who would like to speak? Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Governor, for explaining some of the, the other conditions and uh, explaining the, the new conditions. I, 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 will, I would support the new conditions. Um, I would just ask Ms. Dumas going forward to be forthright with us continuing being forthright with our planning staff and of, because it's, we wouldn't have found out about the tree service, him not living in Lawrence anymore, him forwarding his mail to this Airbnb unless I had asked those questions. And I think personally, and I'm, I'm sure Gunner and Planning Department would agree as well, that that information was vital. That's very important information that we should have had in the beginning. So I just ask that going forward, that you were forthright with us, with the Planning Department and with neighbors. And like I said, I will support the approval with the conditions and, um, so thank you, Gunnar, for all that you done, you have done. And thank you, Ms. Dumas, for coming before us tonight and uh, presenting uh, before us. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, it's Commissioner Bynum. I would move approval of the renewal of the SUP for Airbnb with the conditions of approval, but for one year, not two. Ramirez, second. We have a motion and a second for approval for one year. What point of clarification, Mr. Mayor, was that motion to include the additional conditions I mentioned on top of the ones written in the report? I didn't understand what. I, sorry, Commissioner, I was just clarifying that your motion included not just the written conditions in the report, but the amendments to it and the addition to it that we just discussed. That is correct, and okay, changing from two years to one. One, got it. Thank you, sorry about that. Thanks. We have a motion and a second. Any additional questions or comments? <laughs> yes, this is Jim Walters, District 7. I'm a little unclear as to what the additional stipulations are going to be. I heard some options that Gunner presented, but I don't know what it is that's included in this motion. Uh, this is going to hand director of planning and urban design. So it would include all of the 10 conditions that are in the staff report if the that were presented as if the board of commissioners move forward with an approval. It would change number nine to say one year's instead of two years of approval. Um, and it would change number one to say wood burning is not allowed on the property without a permit. And then it would add a new condition. And we don't have a standard condition to this, but we've written similar conditions in the past. We would add a condition that would specifically enumerate that this SUP was for the Airbnb only and no other commercial use on the property. Um, that way, I think we could, uh, we could okay. clarify. Thank you. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Roll call. Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. No. Townsend. Aye. McKiernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. No. Markley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. That is seven to two. Actually, I believe that might have been six to three. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Phil Brooks' vote. What was it? Aye. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, my, my mistake. Seven, seven to two. Thank you. Mayor needs to vote. Or is that? So no, I, seven. Does it? Do the, I need to vote? It's seven to two. That carries. That is correct. There's okay, eight. seven to two, the motion Very carries. Accurate. I thought it was supposed to be eight on the change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, hold on. Can we get a, I'm sorry, point of order. I believe we need eight votes to change the recommendation. Of that, the that's why I was asking if the mayor needed to vote. Uh, Misty? 
Yes, this is Misty Brown, Chief Counsel for the Unified Government. Yes, this would take eight votes okay. in order to pass since it would be overturning the Planning Commission. So because it's seven to two, Mayor, and your vote could change it, you would vote on this issue. Thank you. Mayor Albee? Aye. Eight to two, that motion carries. Thank you, that takes us to item number two, Mike and Tammy Hayes with TM Hayes Management for a special use permit for a short-term rental Airbnb at 2904 Eaton Street. The Planning Commission recommended approval for one year by a vote of six to one. I'd ask staff to make some opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. This is another short-term rental. Uh, this is the first uh, application for this short-term rental. The applicant uh, does not live at the property, so the recommendation for approval is for one year. The vote was, as mentioned, six to one. Commissioner Connolly voted no. Um, this is in the Rosedale neighborhood uh, of the unified government. Um, if you're familiar off Eaton Street, right at the end of state line, uh, before it gets to Southwest Boulevard, there's a series of condo buildings, all very similar to one another. This is one of the units inside one of those complexes. Uh, there's a couple of things going on. Prior to this application, it had been used as a long-term rental. And essentially, I think what we have in front of us is there were two people, the direct, as I understand it, the neighbors on either side of this property, uh, attended the planning commission in opposition to this case. Um, they were concerned at which, at how the property had been managed as a long-term rental and didn't believe that it would improve as a short-term rental. I believe the applicant had, would have a few things to say about that. Additionally, you can see in these pictures, there's a common driveway for this grouping of condos, a separate issue, um, uh, a separate matter that uh, looks like a couple, um, it looks like those adjoining um, property owners are working with the UG to figure out potentially um, a resurfacing plan for this property. And that was another sort of point of contention related to this property in particular. Um, right now we're looking at this as an SUP for four people max, two cars max. There's space inside the garage and on the pad before, like right after you get off um, that uh, uh, driveway that needs itself some repair. While there's a history of NOVs on the property, there are no current notices of violation. Again, we received no support and some opposition. Uh, I believe that Commissioner Connolly um, sided with the neighbors who were in opposition and were concerned about its long-term, uh, its maintenance of a, of a short-term rental. Uh, staff recommends, uh, agrees with Planning Commission, recommends approval for one year. Thank you. I'd ask uh, the applicants to please uh, State your case, state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, we are Mike and Tammy Hayes. We're at 8109 Park Ridge Drive, Parkville, Missouri, which for the record is 17 minutes because we were asked that last time, 17 minutes from the property. Um, Gunner or Mr. Hand said that the two people that were in opposition were on either side and that is um, not correct. They are in the building behind us. So there's, they're not attached to us. The people in our building are, they don't oppose at all. We've been working with them. Yes, right back there, whoever's running the mouse. No, no, nope. nope, outside. Right there, that's where they are. Um, so really only the backyards or have even any adjacent um, adjacent touching or whatever. Um, so it has been a long-term rental and the gentleman who was there had moved out. And because we are getting up in age, if you will, we've got a daughter that's going to be graduating in a couple of years. We didn't want to put this back into long-term rental. Um, we want to do short-term rental so that one, we have access to it if we ever want to be down there. And two, we have been approached by one person that is having services done at KU. And apparently insurance companies will only pay for a hotel for two weeks and their treatment is for six. And so that's what made us think that there are a lot of places at K, a lot of patients at KU 
that come in from out of town that need housing. And there's only three other short-term rentals really in the area when I look up on VRBO. Um, there's Friendship House and Bear House, and they only hold like four each. So our target market, which of course we can't control, but we would mostly market this at KU in whichever way we can um, for patients and their, and or their families to stay there during treatment. Is there any other yeah. Yeah, Or it could be for a traveling nurse that came yeah. come, Yes, come, actually, come, come traveling serve. nurses, traveling doctors, we would love uh, to have them for more than, you know, a few right. weeks, but that is um, what we're talking about. And I, and I think I discussed the last time there were um, the driveway. I spearheaded um, getting the driveway, um, get, move, get the, getting the ball rolling on that. And if you can see, if you can see up there, the driveway is in three pie shapes. And that is how the unified government let it stay when they allowed these buildings to be built around it without requiring a homes association. And so I began, I think it was during COVID. So I'm, I think probably in September, I started then contacting the neighbors, going through the tax records, finding out who the owners were in the circle and trying to get that ball rolling. And I've been working with Jeff Fisher ever since. Um, initially I wanted, I was hoping that the city would take over that driveway and then city services could come through there. There's a trash issue um, that we would, if trash could be placed at the end of the driveways that it would be taken care of. But Jeff could not recommend to the city that the city take that over. So we're working, we've gotten quotes to get the driveway fixed. Um, Mark Shoot, who is at the end of our building, who we're also working with is getting another quote. We've gotten a quote to get the driveway fixed. But the issue is we, anybody who's going to do that wants the money up front because there are um, 12 different owners. And if one owner doesn't pay, you know, that's a huge chunk of money that that contractor's out. So um, Jeff had said, push come to shove, the city will do it and then assess the homeowners in the area, which we, most of the homeowners are all for that eight, I think we have eight on board with city, do it and assess us. And he said it would be over a three year period. So um, the actual, I'm sorry, for the actual um, special use permit, it is for four people. There are two bedrooms. Um, there'll be no fold out couch. There will be no other place for anyone to sleep. Um, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with um, the, I know um, Commissioner Conley's concern was parties. We don't want parties there any more than anyone else does. The neighbors have our phone number. I was just on the phone today with Roy. He lives right next door. And he was calling me about something to do with the driveway. Driver. And he said, I don't care as long as everybody's quiet by one. And I'm like, no, I want people quiet by 10. You shouldn't have to be up till one o'clock waiting for the neighbors. So my expectations are higher than Roy's, who is right next door. Um, and they have our phone numbers. And when you're on VRBO, the hosts are rated as, you know, it can be a good host, a super host, or a super plus host, whatever. Um, but also the people using the site are rated also on how they treated the property. So there, if someone does something, have a party because it's in the contract that you can't have parties. Um, you can get that on your profile as a user of VRBO or Airbnb. So, uh, and then they showed pictures earlier of the outside of the house. Now we've, we've redone completely the inside of the house. The uh, windows, since this picture has been taken, the windows have all been replaced uh with with new windows and and trim has been replaced also brought in trim and then we have also uh we have a con paint contractor that should be starting as soon as it stops raining so it could be 40 more days 40 more nights <laughs> um 
but so 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 we're 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 gonna have that it all repainted also. So that that's we're in the process of, do, of doing of doing that. But the inside is almost ready. We're still waiting for the outside to be completed before we obviously before you guys approve it. Uh, after you approve it, we can get it on online. This will be our first adventure into a VRBO. We have been uh, rentals, been okay. rental management, long term rental for a long, for a long period of time. How long have you had rentals? Two, since 2000, so. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would ask is there anyone present, oh, okay. is there any president who would like to speak in support of this? We're seeing none, Mayor. All right. Is there anyone present who would like to speak in opposition? We're seeing none as well. All right, and we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the commission? Commissioner Ramirez. Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's two for two for me tonight in my district. Um, <laughs> I, uh, for, I just have a question for Gunner specifically. I know I sent you and I believe several other and Greg Tolkien uh, an email, I think last week or two ago about the NOV about the, the circle drive. And I and um, Miss Mrs. Hayes, I did speak to Jeff Fisher about that about that issue. So I am aware of what of what is going on there. And so do you, I believe you had brought it up, Gunner. Do they have since who are they going to be? Uh, I'm losing my words. It's been a long night. Will they be held accountable for for that as well? With the issue of the circle drive, it's. Um, I mean, it's it's really all the neighbors' issue. Um, not okay. Just others. So I mean, yes, it's still open in the result, but I think that as I understand it, again, they're working with the UG and their neighbors to resolve it, and so we're waiting for that resolution, and then once it's been repaved to our standards, then we will lift it or close the case, excuse me. Okay, so they are sharing with it, with the neighbors, they're sharing the and resolving it with Jeff and everything. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, it's not the burden, of, the burden of the driveway is not theirs alone. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, I personally do not have any other questions. Um, so I, I would may I would move to approve the application as submitted. Second by him. We have a motion and second. Is there any final comments uh, from the applicants? No. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the commission? Roll call, please. Roll call. Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. Aye. Townsend. Aye. Kiernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Townsend. Aye. Markley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Hillbrook. Aye. Vote is nine to zero. That motion carries. Thank you. That concludes the planning and zoning portion of tonight's meeting. We now move to the regular portion of our agenda. Does any member of the commission or county administrator wish to set aside any item on the regular consent agenda? If an item is not set aside, all items on the regular consent agenda will be voted on by one vote. Ramirez, move all items as submitted on the consent agenda. Parkley, second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Roll call, Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. Aye. Townsend. Aye. Kiernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Markley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. Vote is nine to zero. That motion carries. Thank you. We now have two items under the administrator's agenda. Item number one is a resolution setting a public hearing date of June 10th uh, for the Village East Star Bond District. Mr. Bach. Thank you, Mayor, and thank goodness we are requesting to set a public hearing date, not have a public hearing tonight. So, yes, as the Mayor said, the Village East District, which is more familiarly known as the Homefield Project, um, is proposing a change in that area. 
and we're just requesting to set that public hearing tonight for the date of June 10th. I'd entertain a motion. So moved, Philbrook. Romero, second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. Roll call, Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. Aye. Townsend. Aye. Kiernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Barkley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. The vote is nine to zero. That motion carries. Thank you. Item number two is a resolution pertaining to the Millhouse multifamily project. Mr. Bach. Thank you, Mayor. This is an apartment project that's going forward as part of the home field development project. It's an acknowledge acknowledgement and assumption in the transfer of property that allows the new property owner to take over and assume all the responsibilities that we put forth in the development agreement that we've placed on home field. Um, this project is moving forward and I would recommend it be approved. Okay, any comments or questions from the commission? Mark, we move to approve. Romero, second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Roll call, Bynum. Aye. Burroughs. Aye. Townsend. Aye. McKiernan. Aye. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Barkley. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. The vote is nine to zero. That motion carries. Thank you. Our last item is under the commissioner's agenda, a continuation from the May 17th special meeting regarding existing COVID-19 health orders. Mr. Bach, opening remarks. Thank you, Mayor. Um, last week on Monday, we did host a special session where the commission was talking about the um, health orders. As part of that meeting, the commission decided to table this item and bring it back to the agenda tonight. There is no action coming forward with this item tonight. However, as the commission was discussed, we did ask our health department to come forward, give a brief update as to where we are in current status um, before the commission continues any discussion they may wish to have. And with that, I will recognize our director of the health department, Julianne Van Loo. Julianne. Doug, thank you, Mr. Mayor and commissioners. Could someone please promote Dr. Aaron Corvo to panelist and- They've both been upset. promoted. They're both here? Excellent, thank you. Share my screen. We will be very brief this evening. We just have a couple of slides for you. So just kind of a very quick uh, recap of where we are today in Wyandotte County with our COVID case rate and numbers. Uh, we are, our seven day rolling average is sitting at about eight cases, which is as low as it's been since um, March, 2020. So we are at a pretty historic low uh, for cases in Wyandotte County and our percent positivity is around 7%. Um, again, a historic low for us in over a year. So we are looking um, to be in very good shape on, on that front. And I'm gonna go ahead and pa pass to Dr. Corvo for an update on our vaccine data. Thank you, Julianne. Um, good, good evening, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, just a quick update on our uh, vaccines in Wyandotte County. Uh, as you can see here that um, Wyandotte County residents with at least one dose of the vaccine uh, amounts to 32.7% of the county. Uh, residents who have completed the vaccine series, um, we're up to 27.1% now. And of course, uh, you'll uh, remember that the uh, completed vaccine series um, refers to uh, the two full weeks past either the second dose of the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine or two weeks post the uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, which is the, the single dose. Um, Unfortunately, the majority of our, our county, as you can see, remains uh, un, unvaccinated at this time. Um, just wanted to point to the fact that, um, you know, we're pulling data from all over uh, the state of Kansas. Of course, um, uh, it is uh, probable that um, some of our residents have been vaccinated in Missouri, although we're not able to, uh, to get those numbers. I'm gonna pass it now to uh, Dr. Alan Greiner for the uh, remaining slide. Thanks, Dr. Corvo, uh, and thanks, Commissioner's Mayor, um, Mr. Bach. I, I think we just want to emphasize we're kind of in the same place we've been. Um, we know that we have significant risk still with our vaccination rates in the county. Those rates remain low. We don't think the science is a lot different, but, but we know, we kind of know where we are in terms of 
um, our situation in the metropolitan area. And we understand kind of the concerns of, you know, of the businesses, of the, the wider community at this point. We, we anticipate, of course, that something's going to change at midnight tonight. And we're kind of here to, to, to throw out the idea that we don't need to have a lot of conversation tonight. There might be some things we need to pivot to in the coming days in terms of thinking about how we can creatively get these, these vaccination rates up over time. Uh, but, but, you know, we know our current orders are about to expire uh, and we, we think we've got to focus on protecting those that aren't vaccinated, getting them convinced to do that, and protecting those that might be immunocompromised immuno or otherwise vulnerable. So kind of tongue in cheek, I'm, I'm throwing the idea out there that we don't need to have a lot of conversation tonight. We don't want to take too many questions if we can avoid it, because I think we need to pivot to some, some new activities in the coming weeks, which which we want, we want to work with all of you. You, this, you know, this commission um, has been so supportive of us at the public health department. I think, I think all of you know we have we have an absolute rock star as a as a public health director in Miss Van Lu. I think the team and and with your support has done amazing work. And so we're kind of hoping tonight we can we can move forward and we'll bring some new ideas in, in the coming weeks. And and we want your ideas too. So. We want them from the community. We want them from the commissioners. And, and we know we can keep moving forward to, to, to keep things going in a positive direction. So that's it for me. That's it for, for us. And, and, and we're happy to take a few questions. But again, I'm sort of begging, and I know you've had a long meeting already, that, that we can move quick. Thank you. Thank you again, Doctor. Thank you, Julianne. Um, any comments or questions from the commission? Could we have a comment um, from Commissioner Burroughs? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Bro. Commissioner Burroughs, District at Large 2. Dr. Corvo, I, I just want to say thank you for your patience with us and the understanding that uh, there is, that these have been very trying times on the public. We've done, I believe, monumental work in trying to incentivize those to get vaccinated that have chosen not to do it or uh, quote, have not had an opportunity to do it yet. Those of us that have acted responsibly and, and taken the opportunity to get our shots, uh, I guess I'm a little confused as to uh, the mandate expires midnight uh, on, two, on the 28th. I think you said this evening at midnight. If that's the case, then are you suggesting that we pivot into a strong recommendation or are you going to bring recommendations forward uh, as this mandate expires? Uh, Commissioner, we have not prepared any recommendations um, for this evening. Of course, um, we feel that uh, following the CDC's guidance is uh, appropriate and uh, certainly um, would uh, recommend that, that those who have not been vaccinated wear uh, masks in, in public. Um, so we feel like that, that is appropriate, but um, I believe you are correct that it is tomorrow that, that, uh, uh, that the current uh, order expires. Again, if I may, I just want to say thank you for your due diligence in keeping us in our community on task. It is, uh, I think it was the inconsistency in communications, uh, having been part of the original core four that was causing some grief and knowing tomorrow that we will again be part of the core four, basically following the CDC guidelines. I think uh, our citizens will be appreciative and understanding of that with more clarity. So thank you so very much. Commissioner McKiernan has his hand up. Commissioner McKiernan. Thank you. Um, absolutely right, Commissioner Burroughs. I do agree with you on this. I do want to thank all of it. I'll look over to here because this is where they are in my field division tonight. But to everyone who uh, has worked on this so diligently from the beginning, Mr. Mayor, it would seem to me that the action we could take tonight is to take no action. That would allow the health order uh, to expire at 11.59 p.m. on May 28th, 2021. That would then, as Commissioner Burroughs said, put us in alignment with all of the other counties in the metro area. I think I will personally encourage everyone who has not already been vaccinated to get vaccinated as soon as possible. And I will say this only for myself. 
If you feel more comfortable wearing a mask in any setting, wear one by all means, if you feel it will benefit you. So I would suggest that our action this evening is no action. Commissioner Fieldbrook. Okay, so I've already checked with my uh, the Kansas Optometric Association to make sure that our CDC uh, guidelines are to follow our stringent protocols, which means doctor's offices are supposed to maintain in the manner in which they've been doing, um, which is masks. So don't get mad at your doctor when they say, put your mask on to come into place because we have that responsibility. Going along with saying that, that also means the CDC lets any business decide for themselves what they want you to do. If they want to protect their, their uh, workers, if they want to protect the folks that are coming in, that's up to that business. So please understand and be understanding of folks that do have those signs up and say, you have to have a mask. They have that legal right to, re to require that mask on you if they so desire. So this doesn't mean you can just go ahead and do anything you want to. Other people have rights too. And I just wanna remind everybody of that. And thank you again for all of the hard work our health department has done. And, and so my, my concern would be, and I'm, and I'm praying that I'm being a nervous ninny over nothing. And that is that if we get a rebound on this, our health department will let us know if we have to make some kind of a change in how we're handling things. And so I am going to rely on you guys for that. So thank you so much and God bless. Commissioner, Commissioner Ramirez. Commissioner Townsend. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioner Townsend, District 1. I too would like to echo the uh, kudos from my colleagues to the health department. They have been consistently uh, great for the last year and a half plus on keeping us informed of what the status is. Um, I just wanna make sure that I understand if we do take no action tonight, that means that the current health order requiring masks indoors in Wyandotte County will die a natural death. Is that correct? Yes, it expires, it would expire. Okay. And my concern with that uh, is that once any mass mandate from us per health order expires, it, that'll be a horse out of the barn that will be hard to get back. Um, if as uh, the doctor mentioned, they may come forward with something else. I just find that hard to believe that the community will be accepting of that. And we should be, I'm still very concerned that only 27.1% of Wyandotte County residents have been fully vaccinated. So that is a concern for me. Uh, and I would hope that we would um, renew the current mask order at least, which only applies to really indoor environments. So uh, again, thank you to uh, our health department staff uh, for all that they have done and continue to do. Thank you. Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, as all of us have said, thank you, Julianne, Dr. Corvo, Dr. Greiner, the health department and everyone. Now, there's only one word I can explain these last 14 months and, that, and that's pain, um, emotionally, socially, economically. We have all felt pain in some way, shape or form. So I thank you for leading the charge in mitigating that pain. Um, I, I can't thank you from the bottom of my heart, from my district, we all thank you for all that you have done. I, I personally do not support letting it expire, letting the mandate expire, because I don't think we are ready, but I'm not gonna be the stickler and make us stay here and debate it more. Um, I, I will ask if this is something we one order that or one action that we can take so that it is not a free for all. 
that we as a governing body adopt the CDC guidelines as recommendations because KCMO has done so, Johnson County has done so. I think we need to do that so that we don't have a free for all. And so I hope that is something, one action that we can take tonight just to put us in one more lock and step with the core four. Uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Misty Brown, I believe if we, there's really no need to adopt the, the CDC guidelines because they're simply guidelines. There's, they're just recommendations about how to proceed. Um, there are no measures in, involved in that. Am, am I correct about that? Um, this is Misty Brown, Chief Counsel. Um, you are correct, Mayor, that the CDC guidelines are just guidelines. However, the commission could vote to direct the administrator to issue, direct staff to issue recommendations to the public to follow CDC guidelines, but no, there's no need per se to adopt them, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and again, it's already been stated, um, um, Julianne, you are a rock star. That is, that's a, that's a fact. Uh, I thank Dr. Corvo, uh, Dr. Greiner, you all are both rock stars as well. Um, and in urban vernacular, uh, I'm rocking with you guys. Uh, whatever recommendation uh, you make to us, that's likely where I'm going to go. I will say in my concluding statement, um, even as a Pentecostal preacher, uh, my, con my concluding statement is, is this. We cannot presuppose that just because uh, we have heard primarily from persons who were opposed to a health order, that they speak for the entirety of Wyandotte County. And I think it is a fallacy and short-sighted on this commission to suggest that uh, whatever actions or, uh, or, or actions that we take or don't take speak for the majority of Wyandotte County. Um, I think we need to be a little bit more, um, have just a little bit more discernment than to suggest that we are uh, speaking for all of Wyandotte County and by uh, just uh, allowing this to pass and to not do anything. Uh, as has already been stated, 27.1% is not a high percentage. We still lag the state, we still lag national percentages. Um, but again, I'm not going to uh, rock the boat, but I just do want to be a voice uh, that says, you know, there's, there's, there are more voices than what are being heard uh, uh, via uh, phone calls and or e emails uh, that uh, would be representative of the true voice of Wyandotte County. Thank you so much, Mayor. Commissioner Townsend. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Townsend, uh, District 1. Um, one thing I'll say about our commission, and this has been my experience for almost eight years now, we may disagree, but it's we, we for the most part, are not disagreeable. So I am not afraid, based on the information that has been presented tonight, to make the um, uh, motion that we... Uh, continue for another 30 days with the current health order. And if our um, dynamic health department team wants to come back, that gives them some breathing room to come back, uh, you know, with other recommendations um, that may be afoot, as uh, Dr. Greiner alluded to, uh, so be it. I am still very uncomfortable with the low percentage of residents fully vaccinated in Wyandotte County. And with regard to the core four, if truth be told, we haven't been uniformly core four since the situation arose where everyone was shut down. And little by little, other jurisdictions peeled off doing what they thought was in the best interest of their jurisdictions. So it's not that Wyandotte County forsook the core four, uh, we were left looking at our situation and doing what we thought was best for our constituents. So that is my motion and we can vote it up or down and, and trying to do what's in the best interest we each think of our constituents. So that is my motion. All right, so we have a motion to extend the current order 
for an additional 30 days. Is there a second? Second, Ramirez. There was a second by Ramirez. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'd entertain a roll call, please. Roll call, Bynum. I think Commissioner Ramirez put his hand in the air. Did you have another comment before we vote? I did, but we can just move on to speed up the process. Roll call, Bynum. My vote is no. Burroughs, no. Townsend. Aye. McKiernan. No. Ramirez. Aye. Johnson. No. Markley. No. Walters. No. Philbrook. No. The vote is two to seven. That motion fails. Thank you. Uh, again, thank all the commission for your continuous work. And we know we're not done with this yet. Um, and uh, thank again to our public health department for all your work. That concludes our meeting for the evening. We are adjourned.